Hey guys, welcome back. This time we're going to talk about how good writing can lead you into bad writing if you're not careful. Uh, but because of the subject matter of this one, uh, we may get statistically more clicks. And uh, so I'm going to introduce myself in case the viewers come in here because of the Star Wars content I'm going to be talking about in a little bit. Uh, uh, my name is Evan Curry. I write science fiction. Uh, this is my full-time job. I've been doing it for a while. And this is a series of videos that I'm just calling Let's Write a Novel in which I talk reviewers through different ideas, different concepts, tips, tricks, whatever, to help them put down the words uh, and discuss just the ins and outs of writing. If you have any interest, I will include a link to my Amazon down below. And if you want to leave comments or whatever, cool, I'll try and answer any questions. Now we're going to move on to the video here. Uh, it's, like I was saying, we're going to be talking about how good writing can actually lead to bad writing. And to discuss that, we're going to use this over here. Hoping this shows up. If it doesn't show up, I'm not going to post the video. This is the Star Fortress from Star Wars, specifically from The Last Jedi. It's the bombers that we see at the beginning of the thing, the, of the movie, that had everybody sitting up in like gravity bombs in space. What? <laughs> and I am going to use this as an example of good writing, good uh, a good design that fits the, uh, the uh, fits the story, fits the universe that somebody actually crafted really carefully, and yet the way it was used is bad writing. So first, let's talk about the good. The design of the Star Fortress is actually very fitting for Star Wars. It's clearly based off of the Strato Fortress, the, the B fifty twos, those sorts of bombers. They're slow, they're clunky, they can take a hell of a beating, and they can deliver one hell of a punch, which we see quite clearly with the uh, Star Fortresses in the, the movie. Um, so we're going to talk about the design. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you can't use gravity bombs in space. You can, because in Star Wars you have gravity deck plates. We see them on Millennium Falcon all the time. And that means that when they drop a bomb from the top, you can see there's a long stretch here in this uh, design. When they drop a bomb from the top, it's going to accelerate all the way down. Uh, and if they're smart, they'll actually increase the acceleration by tuning up the gravity deck plates further down while keeping a fairly stable uh, gravity at the top. Now, so yeah, gravity works. It's not going to be ideal because obviously once it's out, your bomb is going to be ballistic. It's got no propulsion or whatever. So you do have to position quite carefully in order to hit your shot, and you probably need to be really close. So why would you want to do it like this? Well, you do it like this for the same reason they use unguided bombs uh, or unpropelled bombs in uh, modern air forces. You can pack a hell of a lot more punch into a smaller area. Uh, we see in The Last Jedi that there's hundreds of these gravity bombs. They're probably each one the equivalent of a proton torpedo, but a comparable, uh, you know, a comparable starfighter can only carry like six torpedoes or something along those lines. It makes sense to uh, to uh, think along these uh, for something like this. Another thing people have a problem with is that in the movie you can see she's. The, the main the character that we're following is in a, in a section that is open to space. Therefore, there shouldn't be atmosphere. She's not wearing any uh, protective gear that I recall. Certainly, she's not wearing a spacesuit. That's a problem, right? No, because in Star Wars, we've also seen that they have force fields that can hold in the atmosphere while letting solid material through. Specifically, we see it on the Death Star in the original series, in the original trilogy. Um, where the Millennium Falcon is entering, and you can see stormtroopers and officers and all that. They do the same thing in the Return of the Jedi with uh, the, uh, the Lambda-class shuttle. So we know the tech is there. This shouldn't be a problem. Now, is this a good design? This is where you have to place it in its... You know, you have to figure out where it's supposed to be. In the Star Wars universe, this is actually a really amazingly good design. Um, but remember, in the Star Wars universe, we're not in reality at all. Uh, in the Star Wars universe, combat is held at very close ranges. That's not realistic for space combat at all. 
But in the Star Wars universe, that is part of how they do things. We accept that. Okay, so in the Star Wars universe, this design actually works. Is it a good design in the real universe? Oh, hell no. If you use something like this in the real universe, you'd be picked off a couple light seconds out. Okay, yeah, by... Uh, <laughs> there's no way you would get close enough to actually deploy uh, these sorts of weapons in the real universe. But Star Wars has much closer range combat. That's just how it is. We accept it. Fine. So how does this lead into bad writing, however? Well, because they used all of the materials from the like all of the technology and everything, and they assembled it into something new, they introduced a problem. Because it was something new, something nobody had seen, it snapped everybody out of their suspension of disbelief. And that is not good. Okay? If you are going to introduce something new like this, you have to lead your readers into it. You have to kind of warm up the water a little bit before you drop it on them. Because if you are snapping your readers out of suspension of disbelief, you are basically kicking them out of your story for a certain period of time. And the goal is to have them deeper in your story, not boot them out. So how could we have, or how could they have fixed it? Well, they probably should have introduced the Star Fortress in uh, Force Awakens. Let us see it a little bit, okay? It might have been almost a non sequitur in that movie where it didn't make sense, like, why are we seeing this? But have Rey walk over and walk through one for some reason. Uh, and have it mentioned. Uh, it's like, oh, you, why do you not have guidance on this? We just drop them because it lets us pack more explosives on board, you know, more payload. Then when we for, were introduced to them in the next movie, we wouldn't have been shaken out of it. We wouldn't have been sitting there, wait a minute, you can't use gravity bombs in space and this and that and all that. You know, because following all your rules, following the rules of your universe doesn't do you any good if you have to force your readers to struggle through your logic, okay? Uh, you want them to intuitively grasp what you're getting at. That means that you have to do your world building first. And in many ways, we're always going to be coming back to that. World building is king for writing a large series. In a single novel or a novella or something like that, character is king, no question. But the second you start expanding into a series, you better start thinking about your world building because characters are still going to be supremely important, but your world is also a character. And I guess that's mostly what I wanted to get at here. If you got any questions, like I said, put them in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, Hit the like, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever. Uh, thanks for watching to the end. Hope everybody's safe, and I will see you guys next time.